Josh, a severe weather. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Thank you for joining me. Got some update on the tropics with a major typhoon impacting Taiwan, and then things expected to start picking back up here in about a week or so across the Atlantic Basin. So I'm going to share mostly tropical forecasting here. Not too much to talk about in the U.S., just wet in the south and east, especially across Texas. So let's take a look at what is to come. And you will see that we may potentially have something to start tracking as we get into the beginning of August. So it's still about a week away, uh, but we are seeing some support on our model guidance for maybe some slow development here over portions of the Lesser Antilles and then tracking towards the Bahamas and eventually the southeastern U.S. Now, a lot of uncertainty still as nothing has formed for the time being, but this is the area that we're going to be watching as uh, waves will be tracking from the African coast across the main development region. Things aren't very favorable right now, but uh, I am going to take a look at what's going to turn it more favorable in a little bit. Across the rest of the globe, we do have a couple of invests here across the eastern Pacific. No threats to land with those. Uh, we are going to continue to watch the wave, wave train here coming across Central America into the Pacific. And all the action has been in the Western Pacific. We did have a strong tropical storm that is now weakening over northeastern Vietnam and far southern China. Uh, but the storm of greatest impact right now is uh, violent typhoon Guyami, 145 mile per hour, category four on the Saffir Simpson equivalent, uh, making a bit of a loop here as it approaches Taiwan. Eventually it will weaken crossing the island here. Uh, over the next 24 hours and then make a second landfall as a weaker typhoon just north of Guangzhou in China. But a lot of uncertainty on this storm, and I'm going to break that down for you here right now. Take a look at this weirdness here. We uh, had the storm get ready to move inland, and it decided to take a clockwise loop just near the coastline. And if you take a look at why, the eye wall was going to replace itself, but instead it's been interacting with higher elevations in eastern Taiwan. And those mountains have effectively kicked the system back offshore, so it has not officially made landfall yet, but it is expected to do so. Here's a look at the radar from Taiwan, and you can see uh, just really bizarre. The storm came, came up towards the coast and then decided to loop back out and is going to complete that loop and eventually make landfall. Just a very unusual setup here, but not one that is completely unheard of, believe it or not, here. Um, just a, a very uh, unique situation here. According to uh, meteorologist Brian McNulty out of Miami, there have been storms that have done something similar in the past. And you can see some crazy loops going on here at least uh, seven times prior here from these storms that have been moving through Taiwan. But nonetheless, a very nasty system uh, moving into the island here, especially as we head to Thursday local time in Taiwan. All right, looking across the Atlantic Basin, uh, you can see there are multiple waves that are crossing the Atlantic at this point, but a lot of stable air in place, big area of high pressure, and extremely strong sinking air coming from Saharan dust. This is going to continue here for probably at least another week or so uh, as these waves are going to be doing battle and eventually kind of just continuing on this southerly track where they may have a chance to develop by the time they make it on this side of Central America off the Mexican coastline. Uh, we do have a, a stalled front. You can kind of see it draped here right across uh, this portion of the southeastern country. A lot of rain uh, over um, the uh, coastal waters of northeastern Mexico and south Texas. A lot of rain heading up into Louisiana and southeast Texas this morning. And uh, these rainy setups will continue. Florida will see some locally heavy showers and storms with a southeasterly flow here. Uh, but the good news is that we just don't see any kind of development anytime soon. If you take a look at the upper level pattern here, I'm going to bring that up on the uh, water vapor. Uh, you can see just an extreme amount of sinking air. These deep black colors here across the main development region are keeping anything from going for the time being. So unusually quiet. Uh, it is typically not very busy yet in the season. We, we had barrel, which was very unusual. Uh, but we just don't aren't going to see any kind of development with this huge region of sinking air in here. And anything that does survive is going to get some wind shear from this trough in here. You can kind of see the circulation right in here east of the Bahamas. So for the time being, things are still quiet. But that will be changing here as we take a look. Whoops, sorry about that. I'll uh, get that off my screen. Or, or will we? <laughs> There we go. Um, as we take a look here into the longer range over the next few weeks, we are going to start to see better chances for development. It's not great just yet. This is the European. And uh, as we zoom into the Atlantic side here, um, you will see that uh, chances are greatest on the other side of Central America, but they are beginning to climb now. Not a great chance, but 
some gradual development chances as we head towards the islands here by the beginning of August, and eventually uh, some chance to see something coming up the East Coast as well. Uh, the following week, um, we'll still potentially see something here near the Carolinas and the Outer Banks, uh, but the main development region does start looking more active with increasing chances for development crossing the main development region into the Caribbean Sea and perhaps into the southern Gulf of Mexico. And then as we head towards the beginning of what I call the peak season, you can see chances are climbing already here by the second to third week of August and continuing the climb towards the end of August. Now, a decent chance that there'll be a cyclone moving close to this region here uh, across a good chunk of our main development region, the East Coast, Gulf of Mexico, and Southwestern Caribbean Sea. Let's take a look at the ensembles here, and you can see nothing popping up here anytime through the end of this week. Uh, just no real areas to watch. But as we head into the beginning of next week, and I'm going to stop this, we start to see a little bit more support for some slow development. As we get closer to the islands, there's a better chance that wind shear should relax and a weaker system may try to get going but it's not gonna be for at least another week. The time step on this is actually next Wednesday the 31st at seven o'clock, eight o'clock Eastern time in the evening. As we head into Thursday though, uh, we do see some more support for something, but it may be interacting with the islands here. The mountains are in Haiti and Dominican Republic and across Cuba. So depending on where this system may try to form, we could have a, a totally, um, conf I won't say confusing forecast, but one that's gonna be highly uncertain because if the system forms and moves over the islands, it's gonna have a struggle to develop. It'll bring heavy rain for sure, uh, but will struggle to develop. However, if it avoids these islands and goes north towards the Bahamas, then there will be a chance for some development. This is a look at the cyclone locations over the next 15 days. And you see some support for something maybe through South Florida, maybe even coming up into the Carolinas, uh, but more models showing that this may try to continue on into the Gulf of Mexico if indeed it forms. Uh, the time frame on that is going to be sometime around and after the weekend of August 3rd and 4th. So we're looking about five days into the month. And as you can see, things are going to get a little more favorable as we're heading into a La Nina. Right now, still kind of neutral, but uh, two tenths of a degree Celsius below the mean. So we are aiming in that direction. And water temperatures, temperatures let me slow down here, across the entire Atlantic are running hot. And the only areas that are a little below average are just near the waters of Africa and over the, I guess, Sargasso Sea, if you want to call it that, south of Bermuda, which is right here. But uh, the majority of the main development region has actually heated up due to lack of activity over the last three to four weeks. And the North Atlantic is even hotter. So this is a loaded gun for storms to form and then intensify rapidly. We saw that with barrel out in here. We're seeing it in the Western Pacific. Seems like the rapid intensification is becoming more and more of a challenge here as the waters continue to run hot. Here are our actual sea surface temperatures. This is in Celsius. Uh, we typically wanna see about 26 to 27 degrees for Atlantic development. That's about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, but you can see in the Northeastern Gulf near Florida, these numbers are up to 31, 32. So about 90 degrees Fahrenheit, very warm water. Is it record warmth? I think we're pretty close, but I don't know uh, how you can compare data now from way back in the day, but certainly it is the warmest that we've seen in recent times. And uh, you can see the amount of that warm water goes deep into the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico with extreme amounts of oceanic heat content as well. Uh, so the very warm water is one piece of the puzzle. The other piece is wind shear. And you can see right now things are not super favorable. Uh, the areas in orange uh, indicate um, upper level convergence, what we want to see is divergence, these negative numbers in purple. So for the next week or so, uh, we do have some marginal support for something to try to form east of Florida, but not very good support just yet. And the following week, the support still isn't very good. So if something forms in here, overall, it's going to struggle to develop. But as we head past the 7th of August into the middle of the month, we start to see a transition into more favorable um, upper level um, spreading of the atmosphere that divergence and as we see over the main development region of the atlantic things are definitely starting to turn more favorable and continuing that direction as we get towards the middle of the month of august and this continues to look concerning but the the, the last 10 days of the month of august into early september uh, we see very favorable upper level divergence in the areas where the waters are warmest the caribbean east of the bahamas and the gulf of mexico 
This is not a guarantee we're going to see a strong hurricane, but if I've ever seen anything this far out that looks favorable, this would be it. So obviously now is the time to start preparing for something. Now taking a look at the operational European from earlier, you can see that we start to see some gradual development, maybe a potential weak system here, like I said, towards the end of next Wednesday night or Thursday morning, 192 hours from now. Uh, according to this model and maybe something tries to develop the operational model only runs out to next friday evening has a weak area of low pressure here uh, near cuba and generally heading in the direction of the southeastern gulf of mexico somewhere in here uh, but again this is just one model and i want to see more support uh, now as we look at the control this one's probably more aggressive than any of the other support that we've seen you can see it takes it into the southeastern gulf next weekend and then maybe threatens the gulf coast after that but again um this is not an official forecast i certainly am not predicting something like this to happen it's just one model solution but you can see there is some support for something to try to make it up into here um the european ensemble has multiple solutions here and you can see the average of everything um is uh north of hispaniola around the second or third but this is just one solution we have some weaker solutions in here as well and you can see uh, obvious spread here across the eastern Gulf, across the east coast of Florida here by the fifth, fourth, fifth, or sixth. So the take home from this is that something could try to form. Um, the track on it, very uncertain. Certainly support with warm waters and lower wind shear for something maybe more significant here around the fourth, fifth, and sixth, but a lot of uncertainty at this point. So if you're in the southeastern U.S. or even in Cuba, the Bahamas, or the Hispaniola in Puerto Rico, at this point, you just need to be watching things. It's not time to start canceling things at this point. Uh, it is not time to go freaking out yet. We've got a long time before we get to this. Uh, but certainly, uh, models are starting to key in on what's going to be the beginning of a busier weather pattern coming up. If you look at the GFS Ensemble, you will also see the uh, support here for something named is not nearly as strong as what the European is showing. So again, there's just not a lot of agreement just yet. I'm still making this video because I think it's important to share uh, this potential setup with you guys, but we've got a lot of time before anything could form. Uh, and you can see the GFS favors the East Coast versus the Gulf of Mexico. And finally, the Canadian Ensemble, uh, again, is starting to try to develop something here. We get some lowering pressures coming underneath this high pressure ridge. Uh, but the Canadian is, is not as excited as the European or the GFS. It does have something in the central Gulf uh, as we get to the week of August 5th, but doesn't have any solutions that are super strong. Uh, so as always, I thank you for your time today. Forgot to put up my slide that, uh, that asks you to become a subscriber. But uh, if you could, I would appreciate um, your support here. Share with your friends as well. I'm going to try to have a video as we get towards the weekend again. Uh, as always, I give all the honor and glory to God and my Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, I've been called to do this to... Uh, serve others. This is how I serve. And I know you all have multiple gifts as well, and you can serve other people with them. Um, you don't have to believe what I believe, but I do say that I've got joy in sharing uh, what I believe is is the inherent word of God, the inherent word of God, uh, John 3, 15 to 17, King James Version, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And I think a lot of folks see a lot of terrible things happening and wanna blame it on God. Uh, but this word is a promise from John that God actually loved the world so much that he gave up his son to die on the cross so that we could live eternally with him in heaven. And I'm not going to judge you if you don't believe that. In fact, I welcome people of all kinds here. Um, I'm going to spread the love and the joy of the Lord with you. But um, all I can really do is just welcome you back and uh, hope that you have a wonderful day and that you use the best of your abilities to bless other people, whether or not you choose to believe what I believe. I hope you all have a wonderful Wednesday. Uh, thank you for joining me with this shorter video. And um, if there's any major weather popping up soon, I will let you all know. Have a great day. See you.